good evening, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, my voice is a little scratchy tonight. I promise I'm not ill. Maybe I've just been talking too much. It's hard to say. So welcome to the back room. We're so happy that you could all come here tonight. We have a fantastic panel of authors tonight, as you know, and I'm super excited to be hosting. Um, before I begin, I just want to tell a little bit about myself for those of you who don't know me. Um, my name is Karen Dion, and I'm the author of two novels of psychological suspense that are set in Michigan's Upper Peninsula Wilderness, The Marsh King's Daughter and The Wicked Sister. The Marsh King's Daughter was my big breakout book, and it's been published in 27 languages, and it was a bestseller in some of the other countries, and it's soon to be a major motion picture starring Daisy Ridley and Ben Mendelsohn, so um, pretty exciting times right now. Thank you, those of you who are waiting. <laughs> so that's me. And now I want to introduce our speakers tonight, our visiting authors. And I'm going to do this alphabetically. So we have Robert Crace. He's the author of the best-selling Elvis Cole novels. You can wave, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> that guy right there. That guy. Yeah. Um, Bob is a native of Louisiana. He grew up on the banks of the Mississippi River in a blue collar family of oil refinery workers and police officers. I like this detail from his bio. He purchased a secondhand paperback of Raymond Chandler's The Little Sister when he was 15. And this inspired his lifelong love of writing, Los Angeles, and the literature of crime fiction. Um, Bob has um, written for uh, Hollywood. He's he's done um, written scripts for major television series like Hill Street Blues, Cagney and Lacey, and Miami Vice. But in 1985, he was inspired to create Elvis Cole, and that's why we're all here tonight to hear more about Elvis Cole. And uh, I thought it was really interesting that first Elvis Cole novel, The Monkey's Raincoat, it won the Anthony and McCavity Awards and was nominated for the Edgar Awards. So, you know, it was something really special. So uh, Bob's novels have been published in 62 countries and are bestsellers around the world. Uh, he was named a Grand Master by the Mystery Writers of America in 2014. How does it feel to be a Grand Master? That's a very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All yes, right. Sir. Yeah. I picture, a, a, I don't know, a, a Star Wars Yoda type character, but you know, the, anyway, we can talk about that <laughs> in breakout rooms. <laughs> so uh, Bob lives in California in the Santa Monica Mountains with his wife, two cats, and many thousands of books. And then we have Sophie Hanna. Sophie is calling in from the UK, and it is what time right now over there? It is nearly quarter past midnight. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? So thank you, thank you, thank you for coming tonight and staying up super late in order to visit with us tonight. You're welcome. Sophie Hanna is a Sunday Times and New York Times bestselling writer of crime fiction, and she's published in 49 languages and 51 territories. Her books have sold millions of copies worldwide. And this is cool. In 2014, with the blessings of Agatha Christie's family and estate, Sophie published a new Poirot. I have to always have trouble saying that. A new Poirot novel, The Monogram Murders, and that was a bestseller in more than 15 countries. So now you're doing both, right? You're writing your own yes. and you're writing more um, Poirot novels. So I just think that's amazing. And I can't wait to talk about that more in the breakout rooms. So she lives in Cambridge and um, is calling in from the middle of the night. So thank you, Sophie. <laughs> thank you. Hi, everyone. And then we have Nick Petrie. Nick is calling in from Milwaukee. So, you know, not quite as exotic, but uh, he lives in uh, Milwaukee. And um, that's where uh, BoucherCon recently was. I asked him when we were in the green room if he went to BoucherCon because I didn't recall seeing him there. And he said he was busy working on his novel. So sometimes that's that's life. You know, the, the glamorous life of a, of a writer is like writing and deadlines and things like that. Right, Nick? <laughs> Yeah. So so here's his official bio. Nick received his MFA in fiction from the University of Washington and won a Hopwood Award for short fiction while he was an undergrad at the University of Michigan. His story, At the Laundromat, won the 2006 short story contest in the Seattle Review, a national literary journal. His first novel, The Drifter, won the ITW Thriller and Barry Awards and was nominated for Edgar Anthony and Hammett Awards. 
Um, he won the 2016 Literary Award from the Wisconsin Library Association and was named one of Apple's 10 writers to read in 2017. And another novel, Lighted Up, was named the best thriller of 2018 by Apple Books. Both Lighted Up and The Wild One were shortlisted for the Barry Award. So you've written, what is it, seven novels in the Peter Ash series? Uh, and of course, this is... Seven point nine. I didn't catch that. Seven point nine. Okay. <laughs> and so um, that's the, that's our theme tonight, is, is series fiction. All of our authors uh, tonight write series fiction. And Katie Richards or Kia, as uh, we're going to call her tonight. <laughs> she writes romantic suspense and thrillers, which I think is really interesting. I know a lot of writers who have come from the field of, of romantic suspense and been very, very successful thriller writers. So I'm looking forward to talking about that more with you in the breakout room as well. Um, Kia was a writer since a young age. After college, though, she earned a law degree and worked as an attorney and legal instructor for 15 years, but she never stopped writing fiction. She currently lives in Toronto with her husband and two sons. Those are the formal introductions of our authors tonight, but now we're going to play a quick little game of 20 questions, although we're not going to do 20 questions because that would take most of the evening. But we have these backroom cards with official questions on the other side, so this is all very, very uh, up and up. I'm not just pulling these questions out of thin air. And my favorite question that I always ask, and I'm going to ask these questions in the order that I see everyone on the screen, is, is your desk messy or tidy? And I'm going to ask Sophie. Really, really tidy. Um, I am a bit of a tidiness obsessive freak. Um, I just, I hate anything to be out of place, uh, which always surprises people because I don't look like a tidy person. <laughs> My hair is quite sort of frizzy and messy. Um, so I think people think that I would be generally disheveled in terms of tidiness of my house but I cannot think straight if I'm in a room and everything isn't in its proper position very interesting very interesting that's very insightful we'll have to think about that a little bit more <laughs> um Bob where do you write in this room <laughs> I actually I actually write this is my office uh which by the way is not neat it it actually it looks like a junkyard in here uh, I, I've straightened up behind me so I don't look too terrible and embarrass my family. But I, I actually write all, all over. I, I leave this office. I'll go to coffee shops and write. Um, I, I'm, I tend to move around. So I'm a mobile writer. Interesting. Interesting. So thank you. Um, Nick, here's your question. When do you feel the most creative? Well, first thing, um, I usually uh, get up and go for a long walk or a, or a run, and I'm already thinking sort of about what I'm going to do that day. Um, if I get sidelined, it's really hard for me to sort of get back to things. So I'm, I'm um, a little bit monkish in the morning. I don't really want to have a conversation. I want to I want to go for a walk, have some coffee, and get to work. That's kind of my mode. Yeah. And when you say early, like what time is early? Well, it, yeah, it seems like I'm waking up earlier and earlier every year. So uh, it, depending on what else is going on in my, my life, sometimes I'm just, my, my eyes open up at 5 a.m. and that's just it. Um, so normally I'm, I'm up and moving by 6 or 6.30. But, um, yeah. you know, sleep is always sort of the first thing that fails me when, when I'm stressed out or I'm under deadline or whatever else. Yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm an early morning writer too. And, you know, it's nice to get up before everybody else is up and you get the house to yourself and you, your thoughts to yourself. So that works if you're an early riser. Kia, what was the title of the first thing you ever wrote? Oh God. <laughs> in the woods. It was a short story <laughs> about a, a, a demon in the woods who is chasing after a little girl. I, I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one. I wish I had kept it. <laughs> well, this tells us something about you, I guess yeah. so. <laughs> it's, it's always been mystery, thriller, suspense. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's awesome. Did, did she Did she escape? She did. Well, the one little girl, it was a story in it, within a story. So a grandfather was telling the story to a little girl about another little girl. Okay. So the, the little girl in the story didn't escape. The little girl he was telling the story to was fine. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> 
the authors have each brought a book that they are recommending, something that maybe they've read recently that they think everybody should read. So um, Sophie, we'll start with you. What's your book recommendation tonight? My recommendation is a book called Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Gillian McAllister. And it's a murder mystery, but it's incredibly cleverly structured uh, because every day the protagonist wakes up and it's the day before. So time wow. is moving backwards and she pulls it off brilliantly. So it's a really gripping, really unguessable murder mystery with this structurally so kind of ingenious conceit that just works amazingly well. And I will mention that um, all of the books that the authors recommend tonight are going to be put in the chat, so you'll be able to see them there. So, Bob, what book are you recommending? Uh, I've, uh, I'm going to recommend um, Lisa Scott Alini's uh, newest book, What Happened to the Bennett, which I absolutely loved. It, it moves at a steadily ratcheting, ratcheting breakneck speed, and it is actually propulsive. It's a, it's a thriller but it's a thriller about a family. And I'm a big sucker for this. It's the story of their survival, not, not only as, as uh, uh, from the bad guys, but from everyone. And, and the family itself, the Bennetts, it, to me, it really drives this, this Lisa's novel forward uh, because they are so real and so relatable uh, and, and I found myself so invested in, in, in them and what they were experiencing and what was happening to them that I literally, uh, you know, I mean, stereotypically cliche, you, you really can't stop turning the pages. So big two thumbs up recommendation. Awesome. Fantastic. I've heard really good things about that book. It's too. terrific. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, Nick, what book are you recommending? Uh, I'm recommending uh, James Kestrel's Five Decembers, uh, and this is unusual for me. This is a World War II era novel, um, and it's it's two love stories that actually it's 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 just really gorgeous. Um, and it has this really lurid cover. Uh, it's it's published by Hard Case Crime, so it's this sort of kind of pulpy cover, um, which is a little um, a little deceiving. But um, this was something I just could not put down and just, you know, every once in a while there's a book that just makes you sort of clutch your chest. Like this was that book for me. Um, wow. Kia, what book are you recommending tonight? I'm recommending In the Dark, We Forget by Sandra Wong. It's, uh, it was, it's really well written and fast paced. It's about a woman who is an accident and she wakes up and um, she doesn't initially know who she is or what's going on or, or what has happened. And what I loved about it, it's, it's a um, uh, uh, unreliable narrator book. And I, it, in general, I'm kind of like, okay, we've done the unreliable narrator thing quite a bit, but it, it's, it was unreliable. And, and I guess the tra in traditional sense in that as you're reading, you're not sure, is she lying? Is she not, does she really not know? And I, I'm, I find myself going back and forth between not, she, she she's absolutely knows and she's lying or no, <laughs> she, no, I'm not so sure again. And so I love the, all the way through, I, I was guessing and I was kept in suspense. It, it, it was really great. It was really gripping. I highly recommend, <laughs> you know, you read it, even if you, uh, even if you're like me, you're like, okay, I'm done with the unreliable narrators. This one was really, really good. Wasn't that fun? We hope you enjoyed this taste of what a backroom event is like. The best part comes immediately after when the audience is divided into four breakout rooms and the authors visit each room in turn. We'd love to show you what a breakout session is like because these relaxed face-to-face -face conversations between authors and readers are the hallmark of our backroom events. But breakout sessions are never recorded. What's said in the backroom stays in the backroom. Mm -hmm.